What's up YouTube? My name is Amy's Bro. For this video we are going to be discussing uh, one of my favorite things. We're going to be discussing Asian media. Anybody that has watched this YouTube channel for longer than five minutes knows this. By the way, I only say that not to be a smart aleck. I say that because there are some people that don't know what this channel primarily focuses on now. You may have seen my older videos and go, what, you know, what, what, what is this person doing? But Japanese and Korean media, be it music or dramas, or, or in some cases anime, always have had a place in my heart. And one of the first um, J-dramas I've ever watched was a program called Happy Boys. Which actually is a very good one and I do recommend it for you. It's about 12 episodes long. And if you've never ever seen that one, by all means, I'm not going to spoil it for you. You'll have to go check it out on your own. But this got me wondering. Was there any, and I've been actually wondering this for years, was there any way to watch the programs as they happened in Japan or Korea so that we could see what was going on live? Do you know what I'm saying? It'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? Well, the thing is, is that if you go looking, it's not really that easy. The reason is, well, the Japanese government works a little bit differently than ours does. See, in North America, there's a lot of pay channels. There's also a lot of channels that you can get through different cable packages. Unfortunately, if you're somebody who likes um, Japanese or Korean media, none of them are going to be uh, Tokyo MX or TV Asahi. They're just not made readily available for us. So what is one to do? Unfortunately, there is no 100% legal way to do it. <laughs> there just isn't. Your options are pretty well I can't say there's not any legal way to do it there are legal ways to do it but most of them already offer the well, episode offer the episodes subtitled if you're trying to watch them as they happen that's not going to work unless you go the alternative means way we'll call it I will not name the way I've used but let's just say um, there are ways to do it Okay. Now, when we think about this, it brings us to a very important question. Why hasn't the Western market tried to work out a deal with Japan to bring over some of these channels? NHK is the only one so far that has an international channel. Just like here in the States, the only ones that actually have, the ones that have penetration are, uh, excuse me, for Korea, are TVK, Mnet, uh, excuse me for a second, and KBS World. Now, two of them, TVK and Mnet, are more readily available. Mnet actually has Mnet America. The problem is I don't think the episodes are actually up to date or current. When it comes to say KBS World, I can tell you that the Music Bank episodes are probably about two or three weeks behind. So there's that to consider also. The episodes as far as uh, Jay Mello when aired, I'm almost positive they were the current episode they were on delay inside of Japan, which I thought was weird. But this brings us to a very interesting and very important question. 
what can be done if one wants to watch it. Unfortunately, right now, the only way to do it is through alternative means. Meaning, not, free, not very much a legal way, unfortunately. Because you see, for whatever reason, the Japanese media isn't as available as we would like. If you want to watch Tokyo MX, if you want to watch, I believe it's called AT-X, if you want to watch TV Tokyo or TV Asahi, uh, you're SOL unfortunately. Can't do it. If you wanted to watch Samurai Television, which airs New Japan Pro Wrestling, can't do it. Now New Japan Pro Wrestling, in their defense, they have their own streaming service. And you can watch the shows live as they happen overseas. Uh, they will just air sometimes a bumper or the um, and a big old NJPW world screen before and after their program because there might be certain things that can only be aired inside the country. Do you get what I'm saying? They also do not offer subtitles for um, foreign fans. Now, the, the big question is probably, in some respects, and we probably have to answer this in our own way, well, is there a demand for Japanese stations to be aired in this country outside of NHK? Hell, is there even a demand for NHK to be aired here with an international channel? Well, one could argue no, but they have that right to do so. It is also, it also can be argued that Korean pop music is uh, one of the more popular forms of media, which is why there's more Korean stations available than there are Japanese channels. I mean, hell, answer me this question. And I know it's in some ways apples to oranges, but take an I'm ordering my own video from, say, King Records, and then take a video from, say, Vix, Big Bang, uh, I'm drawing a blank here, FX, you know, take any of those and see what the view count is, and then get back to me. It's almost in this it's almost as if K pop is more popular than J pop. So maybe there maybe that's the reason. I don't know. But here's what I do know. In this country, when it comes to say anime, uh There are a lot of different stations that air. There's AT-X, the, BD, the BS channels, that stands for Broadcast Satellite, by the way, kids. There's TV Asahi, Tokyo Mex, TV Tokyo, the list goes on. There's not just one station. The only reason I mention Tokyo Mex a lot is because, oh, and there's also, I believe there's one called MB MBS. The reason I mention Tokyo, Tokyo Mix a lot is because that's the one that has, say, Black Butler. That's the one that has, say, Yu Do you get what I'm saying? They've got a bunch of other animes, too. They have Attack on Titan, All Out, just to name a few. Do you, do you see where I'm going? They have Vivid Strike. They have Long Rises called. They had Occultic Nine this season. They have a lot of animes that air. It's ridiculous. Like, they're one of the go-tos on late Saturday night, early Sunday morning, which, if you, if you ever wondered how the Japanese schedule works compared to North America, it's all kinds of screwed up. <laughs> I've looked, trust me, I've looked at it for 13 weeks. I looked at the Tokyo Mex schedule to see how they actually start their day and end it. It is the Goofiest thing you'll ever see in your life. Well, I say goofy. 
that's disrespectful. It's one of those things where if you don't understand it and you don't get it, your brain's literally going, what is going on here? To give you an example real quick, and then we'll move on. Uh, if you want to watch Udipri, okay, and you live on the East Coast here in the U.S., before Daylight Savings Time, the airs episode at noon every Saturday before Daylight Savings Time ended. When it ended, you go back an hour. So now we're 14 hours behind them, and it's 11, it was 11 a.m. for 13 weeks. It was insane. But it was actually a lot of fun to watch the episodes because here's one of the big things. And this is something else that we need to discuss. In Japan, there, they have a set commercial schedule they use for their shows. And they actually air about as many as we do, for anybody who's wondering. Excuse me. Anybody who thinks that it's like the open one commercial and then all well, straight through to the end. No, it's not actually. Matter of fact, between the credits and the end card, they run a bunch of promos for whatever products are coming out for that series. Be it a CD series, be it a DVD that's coming out that month, be it whatever. And then they'll run whatever the end card's going to be. This is why if you got to see the finale live as it happened on Tokyo MX, you got the Starish Forever message and you're thinking, okay, the series is over. Move on with your day. But here's what you missed. You missed a bunch of the promo stuff that was coming up for like Love or Repeat Love, which is coming out. But then you also missed the end card, which specifically stated that there was a new Udipri product uh, project animation project that was starting immediately and it had all three groups put up which was interesting because now it confuses the hell out of everybody that's a whole other video so here's the question what can be done to remedy this what can be done legally so that we can start to watch more of the shows that we want to watch possibly because for some people maybe they want to watch a show like Unipri or maybe you want to watch Occultic 9 or maybe you want to watch I know Chaos Child is an animated story or maybe you want to watch um, Long Rides it's a cycling anime maybe you want to watch some of these but you want to watch them as they happen so what does one do? Truthfully, there is nothing you can do unless some regulation changes. And I don't see that happening. Polit I don't see that happening, unfortunately, politically, one way or the other. Just because. But until somebody says, universally, we're not going to geolock any station in North America to the rest of the world. We're not going to geolock any Japanese station, any Korean station, any station in, say, Russia, Sweden, Germany, the UK, wherever. Until that happens, people are going to find a way to circumvent it. Now, does that mean it's fair? No, of course not right now. But see, here's the situation, and here's the thing that's important. I don't think sometimes these cable companies, be they, be they Canada, the US, the UK, Korea, Japan, Germany, Sweden, wherever. I don't think they realize that people have an interest with programs outside of their outside of their times and outside of their country. The idea of geolocking at this point 
is something which is far beyond antiquated. So, if it was up to me, and it's not, but if it was up to me, people would be allowed, legally, to watch Tokyo Mex, you'd be allowed to watch KVS World, you'd be allowed to watch NBC, you'd be allowed to watch the Korean MTV channel because they air a um they air a show over there. I forget what it's called for the um Korean chart shows. But you'd be allowed to watch any station that you wanted with whatever interests you have. J dramas, K dramas. Maybe you want to learn about the news that's going on over there. Maybe you want to watch a cooking show over there to understand what to see what kind of foods they eat. Whatever it is. Because do you know what this is a whole different subject, but this kind of ties in. Do you know what one of my biggest frustrations with people is? No, seriously, do you know what my biggest frustrations? People will say that Americans are stupid. We're not. We're, we're, are, we the stu are we the smartest people on the planet? No. Uh, look, I'll go and come around and say it. I'm not, you know, a Val Victorian. But we want to learn things. And sometimes we want to learn things not just through a textbook, but we want to learn them through visual. But sometimes I think the best visual and audio is being able to watch and to listen. And if we can't do that, and thus maybe try to learn the language through your programs, then we can't, in effect, learn to speak your language and be able to hold a conversation. Do you get what I'm saying? So what I'm getting at is, I think it would be almost in the best interest of everyone if a lot of these stations that we can't get a hold of right now like Tokyo Mex again TV Tokyo TV Asahi NTV yes NTV which I think stands for Nippon TV uh, any of these stations Fuji TV I almost forgot I always forget that one it would do us wonders if people were allowed to get these stations and to watch them and to educate themselves and to learn. Because I'm going to also say this, and this is going to sound um, interesting. Yes, you could say that by doing this, sometimes Americans might be insulted if they feel like the reporters attacking them because they might say you know oh so you're from America or blah 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 trust me I read that shit every day on Facebook when it comes to my Canadian friends you know who you are you need to wor watch your wording a little bit anyway my point is if you keep people from wanting to learn about your country and thus your culture then you have no right to call people ignorant. We want to learn, but we can't because we don't have the visual and we don't have the audio. See, we can't see to hear and to learn. Do you get what I'm saying? And trust me, a textbook is good, but a textbook can only teach you so much. That's one of the big reasons that I actually try to watch as much um, Asian media when I do as I possibly can, especially if I can watch it in its purest form, the rawest form possible. But maybe that's just me and I've ran it for 20 minutes now. What do you think? Am I nuts or is there something to this madness? I want to know what you think. So do me a favor. In the comments down below, let's have a discussion. A legitimate discussion because if we can't discuss this topic we won't get anything out of it 
and therefore we won't be able to make progress we're only going to go backwards but maybe it's just me let me know what you think talk to you later gang bye, -bye.